Welcome to the third episode of the Shaker Bison podcast. I'm Yusuro, and I have a co-host with Lakita. Would you like to introduce yourself? Hi, everyone. I'm a freshman, and um, yeah, my name's Lakita. Yeah, so she's also on our podcast team, and we're here today with two very special guests, Eva and Sophie. So do you guys want to also introduce yourselves? Uh, hi, I'm Eva, and I am, I am a senior. <laughs> And hi, I'm Sophie, and I'm also a senior. Yeah, so they're very involved in our schools, and we're super excited to have them on our podcast. And so we're, today we're going to be talking about uh, mostly colleges and their life, their experience of high school. So how about we start with, could you describe your senior experience? Like generally, what were the good and the best and worst parts of your high school experience? Can you boil it down to like a few things? Is that even possible? It's a tough question. Um, you know, I think for me, of the high school experience overall, the best parts are definitely the people, um, you know, being involved and working together and collaborating to create something, whether it's like creating a study guide for a test or organizing an event with SuGov or like being part of the musical working with other people to create something is always super rewarding. So that's definitely been my favorite part of my whole high school experience. And it's definitely been a bit of a challenge to try to keep that up this year, but um, it's something I think we've all been working to do. And I think we've been all trying our best to continue with it. Yeah, uh, Stugo's done really good this year. I, I've heard a lot of, uh, I've attended some of your guys' events and it's really fun. Impressive how you've done so much through this COVID, coronavirus. Do you miss anything about like normal school that you wish was not there with uh, Zoom school? I do. For I, I um, there are a lot of things that I've been working toward throughout all of high school that kind of like would peak at senior year, kind of like, like like being a president of a club that you're in for four years, kind of thing. Um, and then not having the interaction and kind of collaboration that you would have in an in-person environment that you would have in a normal year. That kind of sucks. Um. That's kind of the, the thing that I really miss most about school and also kind of working together with my classmates in a classroom environment, especially because um, I'm in physics and so, well, Sophie's also in physics. Yeah. So I guess she can, this is kind of a shared experience, but a lot of our class is made up of uh, working together with labs and talking to your partner and trying to work through concepts together. And we don't get a lot of that this year. So it's more just a lot of um, missing out on interacting with people. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I feel that too. This is kind of like the previous question, but if you were to describe your senior year in like three words, what would they be? Ooh, I would say uh, reflective because a lot of looking back at yourself throughout the last four years, um, probably weird, like wacky, like a, just really, really odd so far and exciting. Just looking forward to the future and kind of seeing how things unfold because you know you're applying to college and you're trying to figure out what you're going to do for the next four years and uh it can be stressful but it's also like a really really fun experience so yeah <laughs> I think I have to agree with Eva on all of those it's definitely you know reaching a turning point where like your future self and your past self are colliding as you look back on all the things that you've done in high school and wonder what you're going to do for the next four years and beyond um so like Eva said, it's stressful, but it's exciting to, you know, be at that intersection by your past self and future self, so. Yeah, that's true. You guys, like, so I'm in 10th grade, right? So mm -hmm. sometimes I'm just, like, completely out of school. It's, it's just completely bad, and I, I don't have want anything to do with it. Do you have any, like, tips for that, like, getting through those phases? Yeah, so I think we've all definitely experienced periods like that. Um, I know I have where I'm just so overwhelmed. I just need to take a step back. And honestly, my advice would be do that. Take a step back. Um, you know, I think there's sometimes a stigma against, you know, taking a break or taking some time for yourself to relax, but there's nothing wrong with it. You, I mean, you should give yourself half an hour or an hour a day to just time for you, you know, read a book, take deep breaths. Um, so I think definitely my recommendation would be, you know, relax, just take some time for yourself and, you know, always keep working hard, but there's nothing wrong with taking a break. Yeah, and if I can add, um, so I'm, I'm a senior and I'm experiencing extreme senioritis. 
And yeah. that in combination with online school has been actually horrible. But I also really can't imagine how online school is affecting kids that are underclassmen because I, it was a lot easier to kind of get past phases of like not being able to do anything and procrastination when you're in more of a school environment because you go to school every day and you see other people who are also experiencing the same thing and kind of having the energy of being with other people can get you out of that funk. So I can see how hard it is to be in like your early years of high school and trying to figure things out in an online environment. I can't really imagine how hard that can be, so. Yeah, yeah. Lakita's a freshman. I don't know how you're- That must be so that. hard, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I haven't, I'm not a sports person, so I haven't even, like, stepped foot into the building, other than to get a few stuff, so it's a bit panicky yeah. in a way. Well, the best is yet to come. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. You can only okay, get better, um, right? I feel like this <laughs> question so. gets on a lot of people's minds, like, especially for underclassmen. How much were your high school efforts worth it on your college applications? Like, was studying for the SAT worth it, for example? Okay. I have opinions on this. So you have to be able to balance what you love with school and also figure out how to combine the two. And I think that a lot of people get really confused because they'll just they'll just think like they'll find out things that they think that they're supposed to be doing and they'll think that's what they're going to put in their college app. When in reality, what you want to put in your college app is stuff that you're passionate about and stuff that you're going to be doing in a college environment. So figuring out what your values are and what you love to do in high school, that's the stuff that's going to make the difference in your college job, the stuff that's going to set you apart. Like I, I know I know a lot of kids that um, they do sports just because they want to put it on their college app and for no other reason, or they'll do a club like, oh, it looks really good on a college app, so I'm just going to do it even though I don't really care about what I'm doing. And that's not going to, that's not what's going to help you. So thankfully, I think that I, um, I kind of figured that out in the beginning of my high school career. So all of the efforts that I did in high school, I feel like paid off because I did what I was passionate about and now I can put what I'm passionate about on my application. Um, and about the SAT, yes, it is, I'm, <laughs> it depends. I know a kid who studied for a week and got a 1600, um, but it also, it took me, I studied for a really long time to get the score that I got. Um, and I know a lot of, it just, figuring out what your study plan is, is the best way to do the SAT stuff. The whole testing situation is based on how you study and how you work. It's going to be different for every single person. But personally, for me, studying hard um, and for a lot of time worked for me. But I know I, I know someone who, who didn't study at all and got the same score as me, you know? So whatever really works for you is what's going to work. <laughs> you think you're studying like helped your app? Sorry, hey, I, I interrupted. But... Studying my, my, my college application? Yeah. For us, it's like the, I, it's hard to answer because standardized tests like matter so much less for us now. That's true, so, that's true. Um, Cause I didn't, I, I didn't get to put any subject SATs on my college application, but I, I think that studying was worth it for the SAT for me personally. Cause I'm also a big studier. So I'd say yes for me personally. Yeah, but it probably varies for everybody else. Right? Yeah, hundred percent. And don't sacrifice like your social life for <laughs> SAT studying. I know kids who, who um, they took the SAT like in ninth grade. And like they were studying for four years, which is okay, but that just definitely was, um, you're, you're sacrificing a lot of like social time to do that. So I think making sure that you balance your social life as well is good. I'm sorry, Sophie, I cut you off, but what were you saying? Oh, no worries at all. So I was just gonna add on to what Eva said. Um, you made obviously a lot of really good points. And um, you know, uh, regarding the SAT things, everyone is different and everyone's gonna learn differently. So I have to say in terms of things like the SAT, really you can't compare yourself to other people um, because I know it's called like, you know, the standardized test, but it's not truly standardized in that there are some people that are going to be paying for these prep courses for four years and, you know, having coaches that are gonna help them. There are gonna be some people who don't really care about their score. And the truth is everyone learns differently and everyone has different strengths. So really you can't compare yourself to other people in that regard because you're not defined by your test scores. And I know if you're striving for a certain number and you don't get it, it's disappointing. I've been in that situation. Um, and it's easy to question, you know, whether you're good enough, whether this is really defining your aptitude and your intellect, but it's not. You're defined by so much more than that. So you really cannot compare yourself to a number or to other people because everyone's different and it doesn't make you better or worse than anyone else, you know, to get a higher or lower test score. And I think similarly, in terms of extracurriculars, 
everyone's going to have different extracurriculars. Some people are into sports. Some people have no athletic ability at all, like me. <laughs> and, um, you know, I think like Eva said, don't do something just for the sake of putting it on your college application, because the truth is everyone's going to be able to see through it. Find what you're passionate about, find what you love, and you're going to be better off for it. First of all, you're going to have something that you're going to want to continue and that you're really passionate about, and that's going to shine through. And also the skills that you learn when you're doing something you love are going to be much stronger than the skills that you gain when you're dragging your feet doing something just because you want to put it on a piece of paper. Right, like Eva and I are both super involved with StuGov and the music and theater departments. And I think you can probably agree, Eva, that the skills we've gotten through that, you know, of organization, being able to adapt to a situation, being able to collaborate with other people, those are super valuable. And even if we don't continue those activities in college, because we were so involved and so genuinely passionate about them in high school, we're going to take those skills of collaboration and organization, and we're going to be able to carry those with us and apply them to other situations throughout our lives. So I think basically the bottom line is do what you're passionate about. Don't compare yourself to others because everyone's got their own story and everyone has their own interests and skills. And, you know, that's great for everybody. And it doesn't make you better or worse than someone else to have different sets of skills and different sets of interests. So, you know, be true to yourself, do what you love and just have fun. Yeah. She said that so eloquently. I would like to add one like more small thing, like technical thing um, about, since you brought up standardized testing, uh, a lot of colleges are moving away from making that an important part of the application because of COVID this year, and yeah, it's going to continue throughout the rest of um, kids who are going to be applying. So don't spend too much time doing too much of the SAT stuff. Just yeah. putting it out there. Yeah, <laughs> Work hard, awesome. your best, but don't let it define you. Yes. <laughs> like, I, I felt, as being an underclassman, I felt that pressure, and I knew of it. But like, hearing you guys, you've done everything, you follow your passion, it's worked for you guys, it's it's gives me peace of mind. So like you talked about following the passion. Do you guys like going into college, you guys are hopefully going to be specializing in something. Are you excited about that? Or do you, you think you're going to miss any certain part of having I'm, forced you? Yeah. I'm really excited personally. I, I, I see high school as kind of like, like an experimental, fe I, not field, but like a kind of an experimental area where you're you're thrown into so many different subjects and you're finding what you have an aptitude for what you really like and what you really don't like so I found that I really really love STEM and I really love art and in high school I felt like they were kind of separated so I'm really excited to combine those both in college where I'll have so many more opportunities and so many more outlets where I can express both and I can combine both and be in an environment where I can really delve into what I'm passionate about and not really spend time with things that I'm not like the best at or I don't really like too much like I really don't like history and I don't have to take another history course in the entirety of my college career you know so I'm super excited to kind of um go into more about what I'm passionate about and um in terms of like area like major kind of thing I'm going to be majoring in a uh, biomedical engineering with a specialization in biomechanics or material science so if that was a question but yeah that's good that's good good luck Sophie, do you, do you have anything to say? Yeah, so similar to what Eva said, the interdisciplinary exploration of college is something I'm absolutely looking forward to. And, you know, I think beyond that, it's high school has kind of been limited to, you know, checking boxes, you know, wanting to take the classes that are either the only ones offered to you or the ones that you think, you know, it's either the choice is usually chemistry versus physics, but there's a lot more to science than that. And, um, so I think, you know, delving deeper into those things and being able to explore without the limitations of having to check a box um, is going to be really exciting. And so for myself, in terms of major or concentration, um, I'm actually leaning towards a neuroscience major um, because, and I guess that's kind of a, um, a little different in that it's them from my personal experiences, you know, of engaging with my community, volunteering at a youth disability center and at, you know, various retirement homes and memory care facilities. And those personal experiences have given me, you know, curiosity to learn more about the brain and, you know, what makes it work. And especially, you know, the intersection between the brain and music, because I'm also very musically inclined. Um, and so I guess that just goes to show also that you know, school and academic interests don't have to be limited to the classes that you take. You know, in my case, it's the experiences that I've had and the community that I've interacted with. And that's given me, you know, academic interests that I'm really excited to pursue in college. 
So it definitely doesn't have to be limited to the eight classes that you take um, in high school. There's a big world beyond that. So definitely explore and find something that excites you. Yeah, I feel like that that kind of made me feel a bit more relaxed about like the next four years. Um, what was the college process for you like personally? Like I know everyone says, oh, it was stressful. It was good. But like, what was it honestly though? Uh, oh, oh, I, so I'm the oldest of three kids and both of my parents, they applied to one school and they got in and that was that. So my college process was a lot of uh, me figuring things out by myself and experiencing trial and error. That was for, that was for me personally. So it was, um, it was stressful in terms of having to find information by myself and really go through the process of like trying to figure out what I'm doing. There's this one point where I submitted all of my financial aid doc, um, documentation for the wrong year. So I had to go back oh. and redo that and email. <laughs> it just, oh. it's a lot of, yeah. So <laughs> that was a lot of what I experienced, but um, yeah, also a lot of, uh, it's a very emotionally stressful in a lot of ways because you are looking back at your last four years and it can be really easy to get caught up in, um, oh, I should have done this or I should have done that instead of what you actually did. And realizing that um, you're not, if you don't get into a college, it's not that you're being rejected because you're not good enough. It's that your application is going to fit better somewhere else. Like mm -hmm. if you get rejected from Yale, um, that's okay. It's like they, they weren't looking for your ap application specifically, but your application is perfect for somewhere else and you fit somewhere else perfectly. And just realizing that um, what you've done is going to fit somewhere else way better than other places where you don't get into. So that's for me personally, but. <laughs> For me, um, I guess I was in a bit of a different situation from Eva and that I have a brother two years older than me that did go through the college application process. But um, his process was a little different in that he applied to a school in November and got in then and then his process kind of stopped. So he didn't kind of go through the stress of having 20 deadlines all you know clustered around one date and figuring, oh my goodness, how am I going to write 35 essays by January 1st? Um, and so it is, it yeah. sounds so um, stressful, oh my god. It sounds oh, stressful, yeah. it does. Um, but, you know, I think, like Eva said, the college admissions process is really subjective. Um, and whether you don't, like, if you don't get into a place, it really has nothing to do with you. It's, there are so many qualified applicants for every single school, not all of them can get in. And you know, it depends on the year, it depends on the mood of the admissions counselor in that second. It really has, not, you know, it doesn't mean that you're not good enough or that someone else who did get in is that much better than you. It's really, it's so subjective. And obviously you guys are going to be in a bit of a different situation because Eva and I are applying during the pandemic, which threw a ton of things off, um, you know, from SAT scores to plans we had over the summer that just fell through and, you know, we weren't able to work towards. But um, so, yeah, for me overall, it is stressful. Um, there's there's a lot a lot to work on, and you know I get really overwhelmed sometimes when I look at all of the essays that I have to write, or you know the tests that a school you know usually would want, and I'm like, oh, I don't have that. It's it's really overwhelming, and you know I've had moments where I'm like, why am I applying to this school? I know I'm not going to get in here, but you can't think that way. You have to think. Look, I did the very best that I could when I was in high school. I, you know, pursued things that I was passionate about. I worked hard in my classes. I studied for my tests. And, you know, I think really my best bit of advice is complete an application that you're really proud of. You know, do things that you love, you know, so that when you're putting things on your resume at the end of your senior year, you're like, oh, I love doing that. I'm so happy that I have those memories because that's something that you're not gonna be able to get back. And so you have to do things that you're happy with. And I think once you complete, you know, create an application that you're happy with, um, you know, whether you get into college or not, or the co the, your first choice college or not, um, cause you were into some college, I promise. <laughs> um, you know, you have to know that it is subjective and that it doesn't make you better or worse than someone else. Um, so yeah, it is, for me, it was it, it was stressful and I still have a couple of deadlines left this week. So it's not quite over yet, but um, 
yeah, it's it's been really stressful, but it's also exciting. You know, these are the next four years of your life that are going to need to lead to the next ten years of your life, um, and so it's um it's it's exciting to see where where every where you're going to end up. And also looking at my friends, you know, some of my friends have gotten into colleges and made their commitments already, and these people that I've known since I was like five years old to see them now, you know, going off to college across the country like that's been really exciting to see for them and so I can't wait to see where everyone else um you know everyone else in my class ends up and I know they're all going to do great things um but yeah I think the most stressful part honestly is just the not knowing um that even after you have the application you know you still have to wait you know two or three months yeah. to actually get a definitive answer and so the not knowing is really the worst part but you will know eventually and um you know, don't beat yourself up over anything and, you know, be proud of it. You know, you're going to put in a lot of work, but I promise it's going to be worth it. That's a good Sorry, point. that was like really rambling. <laughs> like, you, you, you've you put in, like, so many hours of work and you don't even find out till like, three or four months down the line. Which yeah. Apply early yeah. application where you can. Not early, just apply yeah, early application fun. everywhere you can so you can get your decisions back in, like, November. Mm, yeah, that's a good point. Do you have like any time management trips, like writing so like 30 some essays? How how'd you guys figure that in, figure that out throughout your managing that and your senior year at the same time? Okay, so I, I didn't, but I will give you some advice for how to. I wrote 23 essays during winter break because I, oh, I saved them all for break. I didn't do a single one before break. I was like, oh, I'll be fine don't that's the worst decision i've ever made anyway um have a plan in august because once you get to december and january of your senior year you're not going to want to do a single thing for college you're not going to want to do anything so try to get stuff out of the way in the summer and try to have a plan for when to do things so i know that um i Wait, tried so the to college have, like, app comes the common app comes out in like august or so yeah, yeah right doesn't it come out like What's this? Isn't it like August, August 30th? It depends, I think, on the school, but I think it's usually around August. Yeah, I think it's, August. it's, it's, it's like it's like late mid August is when it comes out. So um, you don't don't you don't have to start the Common App in August, but just start like getting a college list finalized around August of your senior year, and making sure that you know what you're going to apply to, and don't really apply to like more than twenty schools. Just try to keep it short. Know what you're doing there, and then figure out your essay situation and plan that out for the rest of your year. And don't do them in one week don't save them to the last minute I, I so many people told me that and I still did it really take it from me don't save them until last minute because they're not going to be as good as you want them to be if you save them until last minute. that's that's my, that's my advice there. but yeah uh oh um and also if you're if you're a really organized person and really like to plan things out I really recommend google sheets and trying to get all your information um on there about each specific college yeah, that's that was also point. helpful for me so I don't think, I don't know if you guys are gonna have like the online information sessions, but I was able to attend like 30 and then just write down all the information for the colleges and like be able to compare it for each school. Um, I'm not gonna, I'm not sure if it's the same for you if you're gonna have to travel or anything, but that was really helpful for me to have all the information down and so I can compare it specifically. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a big procrastinator, so I'm gonna do everything I can to not save it till the last week. Yeah, just uh, <laughs> just make your, make some time, make some time in August to sit down with your computer, like have some fun, just look at colleges, it'll be fun, it's exciting. Don't save it until like October. Definitely. I'm definitely a big procrastinator too. Um, so I've kind of felt that same way. Um, you know, I think my advice would be um, most schools, almost all, all of them um, require, you know, a personal statement. And I know in my 11th grade English class, we wrote an essay at the end of the year that was kind of supposed to be like a preview to that personal statement. Um, and so since you know that most, if not all of your schools are gonna require something like that, I would say get started on that over the summer. Um, and I know it kind of sounds like, what, writing an essay over the summer, but honestly, it's kind of fun. And I mean that genuinely, <laughs> okay. okay. Um, that, look, the editing process at the end might not be that fun, but writing down like the things that you like the most about yourself it's a good confidence boost, right? Um, so I would say, you know, start, get started on the personal statement over the summer. It's very low pressure. You don't have to work on it every day. You know, even if you just sit down for like an hour a week and, you know, just 
write some bullet points, you know, think of the things that you want other people to know about you. Um, you know, I think getting that out of the way before, you know, September, October, definitely November is really, um, I think that's definitely good advice because then when you get to all, you know, the schools with all their supplemental essays, all their various questions and, you know, all of that stuff, um, you know, you're not going to have to worry about the big essay that go that's going to all the colleges. That's going to be done. And so you can really focus and hone in on those supplementals. And so then my advice with the supplementals, since there are always going to be so many of them, is um, definitely make a spreadsheet. I agree. Yes, the spreadsheet works so well. It really does. Um, you know, just write down my, I, I know Eva's spreadsheet is probably a lot nicer than mine, but mine is just um, college and it says, you know, how many recommendations they want, what their essays are and what the word count on each one has got to be. Um, and so definitely that's really good. And it's also really satisfying to check it off. I highlight all of mine in green when they're done. And I love seeing the big green spreadsheet. Mm. It's so nice. Very satisfying. Um, also, a lot of schools on the Common App, there's like a general question section. Um, and so before you get started on your essay, I would recommend just, you know, filling out those general questions. It's usually like, what's your name? Um, or has, you know, anyone in your family gone to this college? It's a bit tedious, but it's really simple. Um, and it's going to feel really good to just have that done so that uh, January 1st on at 10 o'clock at night, you're not going to have to scramble and do all of that. The other reason you want to do that is because some schools have a little pesky thing on the common app where you answer one of those multiple choice general questions and another essay comes up. Yeah. So you're going to want to have all of that done beforehand so that you really know for certain what all of the essays are going to be because That's you like don't want to surprise the night before. It's, yeah, I know. Um, oh my God. So just, yeah, I would say get all of that stuff out of the way because then, you know, you don't want the panic of having an extra essay. It's, that's, no one wants that. So I would say definitely do all of that. And then in terms of actually writing the supplemental essays, I say, you know, try not to think of it as a chore. And I know that's definitely easier said than done because it's stressful. And I think the most stressful thing, I said this before, is, you know, writing an application and knowing I'm only going to be able to go to one of these schools, right? Like 20, 22 applications and um, only one of them is actually going to, you know, have a result in the end. Um, but, you know, I think, you know, if it's a Y college essay, looking through the school's website and like getting excited about the programs they offer or the extracurricular activities or the research opportunities in that location, it's exciting thinking about what you might do at that college. So I think, you know, really, you know, dig deep into each supplemental prompt and get excited about it. And, you know, I think once you get excited about the prospect of going to that college, the essays are going to, you know, be a lot easier to write and it's just kind of kind of flow. And yeah, you're going to get stuck at some points, but I think, you know, really genuine passion is kind of the key to all of this. Yeah, it ties back to what you said earlier. Yeah. Wait, wait since we're talking so, about, wait, since we're, just one, one thing, just really quick, really quick. I'm a big fan of charts, on. and since we're talking about spreadsheets, I just, I wanted to share my value chart. Um, I found, this is my number one piece of advice for college applications. It, I, you know, I don't, you have to see, I don't think I can like show us on it since it's my camera. But essentially, like writing out four or five different values that you think you've had throughout high school, like the most important and defining parts of who you are and what you want to kind of put out into a new environment, new learning atmosphere. Um, and putting those on a page and then listing how you've shown each specific value throughout the entirety of your high school career and like making notes about different kinds of things, different anecdotes, how you've interacted with the community with those different values. And then using this to make sure that you have everything that you want to show by yourself on your college application. And then making sure you show each of these different values in each of your supplementals is so incredibly important because you wanna make sure that you've compiled yourself into, like, a, into your application as much as you can. So making sure you have all your values covered is very nice. And then you- Well, oh, it's like what I've heard, like crafting your, like, your, your niche or- Exactly, yeah, exactly. Yeah, your exactly. personality in your essays. Yeah, that's really smart. It's fantastic. And so this is probably going to be the like the last question about college apps. We've been doing this for like months, but yeah. just tell me more about like the editing process of your essays. I'm like, editing process? like, did you guys cringe at what you wrote a couple months ago? Because I definitely like be like, oh yeah, I said that. I'm not so sure about that anymore. So how how'd that go for you guys? Uh, I'd say okay. Well, 
I wrote my comment up essay first. I wrote it over the summer so I could get out of the way, like Sophie said. Very good. Uh, and I edited it so many times that I began to hate it and I did not like it towards the end of it. But I, I couldn't like write a new one. I knew it was like okay and I just rewrote it too many times. So um, with editing, you don't <sighs> top three things. Don't reread it too many times. Um, don't let too many people read it because I see people who like they'll have like 10 friends edit their essay and eventually it's not your essay anymore. You're just taking advice from those 10 people and it's really hard to kind of write who you are when you're just getting advice from, from everyone. Um, and three, don't look at too many examples online because eventually you're going to start writing from the examples and you're not going to be writing for yourself and it's going to make the process so much harder. So um, those are my top three editing things. It does get weird when you're rereading them because you're like, oh, this is, this just sounds weird. This just sounds awkward. But what I did was I wrote like really quickly because um, that's just my writing process is I'm able to like write really fast and it comes out kind of good. And I had one of my friends who's a really good editor go over it and just kind of make sure everything sounded good, make sure my sentences made sense and that my my like ending was clear and all that kind of stuff. And then I sent it in. So that was my entire process for my supplementals. My um uh, my main essay, I like work with my teachers in addition to that one friend with the editing thing. So make sure not too many people are reading it because it'll make things so much more complicated. Yeah, that's a really good point about, um, you know, making sure that it is in your voice. Um, I think it's definitely easy to want to take advice from everyone so that you're pleasing everyone, but it's got to be genuine and true to who you are. Um, so what I kind of did throughout my entire college essay writing process is that every time I would start a new draft of an essay, I would put it in a different Google Doc and they were all in one folder. So I ended up having 25 drafts of my personal statement. Um, and so I see like draft, you know, 25, which is the final one that I used. And it's been like really interesting for me to scroll all the way back to draft one that I wrote in like June. And I do kind of cringe at it a little bit and it changed a lot. Um, but I will say that I have definitely become a much better writer from the college essay process. Um, you know, I've learned how to have a voice and a style that is unique to me, hopefully. <laughs> I'll let you know in March. Um, <laughs> just kidding. Um, yeah, but I, I do think I'm definitely a better writer from this process. Um, you know, with editing, I think Eva's right is that don't, don't overthink it. Um, you know, there is no right answer when you're answering any of these questions, right? There's nothing specific that a certain college is looking for. You know, just be you and make sure you get the best parts of yourself out there. You know, it's also, it's okay to brag. I know a lot of us sometimes, me, myself included, I feel like really uncomfortable writing like, I'm awesome. And obviously you don't write it like that, but you know, it's, it's okay. Like this, this is your chance, right? You've worked hard for the past 13 years of your life to get to this point. And so be proud of it. Be proud of the things that you've done and the person you've become and really let that all shine through. Um, and know that it's not going to be perfect no matter how many times you read it. There's always gonna be something that you could have done a little bit better. Um, so you can't agonize over those little things um, because you know, you're, you're never gonna get anything done if you do. So I guess really be true to you know, who you are feel good about what you write and um, yeah, you know, have fun with it. I think that's really, yeah, really, really the whole point. Um, do you have any high school regrets? Like when you were writing your essay or even just when you were looking back in the four years, did you have like something that you felt really sad that you didn't get to do? Um, I would say personally, no, because I went into high school with two goals and my two goals were to, uh, make as much of a positive impact on people as I can. Like I wanted, I wanted to leave high school knowing that people would like remember me as someone who was good and made as much of an impact as I could. And number two, I didn't want to sacrifice who I was for my academics or for school. So I made sure to like work really hard in school and study really hard, but also to keep my social connections and hang out with my family and my friends and make sure that I kept who I was and kept my passions outside of school. So, um, I, I, and I also, I, I, um, I recognize in, in ninth grade, I think I mentioned this, but to do what I like and not what I think I should like. Um, I spent ninth grade kind of experimenting, finding clubs that I liked. I joined like Science Olympiad and a couple of things and I was like, oh, this is not for me. And then I really, <laughs> I really found what I wanted to do. 
And um, I really continued those and I'm glad I did because I think I finished high school in a, in a good light. I'm very happy with what I did. So there's always things I could have done better, but I don't really regret what I did. <laughs> that was very well said. Um, I was kind of similar in ninth grade. I joined like 20 clubs because I thought that I could or should do all of them. I also joined Science Olympiad and I did not continue it because it really just wasn't for me. Um, and a lot of my friends are active in it but it just wasn't something that I really felt super passionate about. Um, and so it does, it does kind of take some time to, you know, find what you're super interested in. It was actually Eva that recommended to me that I should join student government. And now like that has become my whole life. <laughs> um, and so, you know, sometimes things happen in unexpected ways. Um, but I think in terms of regrets, I think I do regret comparing myself to others as much as I did. It was definitely not good for my emotional state and it's really hard to not do. Um, you know, especially since all of my friends are super accomplished, wonderful, intelligent people. And I think like when I'm surrounded with people like that, it's super easy for me to think, oh, well, they're all doing this and what am I doing? But the truth is everyone's doing something different. All of my friends have, you know, slightly different interests than me and stuff. They're fantastic at stuff that I can't do at all. And I do stuff that they don't. Um, and so I think, yeah, I do regret comparing myself to others. I've done that kind of my whole life, you know, either to my brother or to the people that I'm surrounded by. Um, but no good is ever going to come out of that because yeah, you can so admire true. other people and the work that they do and be happy for them. And you should, you should cheer on your friends and support them. You know, if you really should, having a supportive group of friends is super important. Um, so you should be happy for other people's accomplishments and you should cheer them on, but you shouldn't think any less of yourself for what other people accomplish, because the truth is it has nothing to do with you. Everyone's just doing their best and trying to be the best person that they can possibly be, and that includes you. So yeah, I think that's yeah. what I would have to say in terms of regret. I can totally feel that. Like I, there's sometimes like I get a test back or something, and yeah, I didn't do as well as some other kids, but like I, I just take that moment back. This happened quite recently, actually. <laughs> That I just had to take like a good 10 minutes and just sit back. Like, no, I, I studied for this. I'm proud of what I did. And it might not be the best, but it, it's, it is what it is, right? You can't that's always be the best, but you can always do your best. So, <laughs> so kind of veering off of this topic, but I know you two are really like involved in student government and other clubs in the school. So, kind of an interesting question would be if you had an unlimited budget for an event. What would that be like? What what would your idea be? I was thinking about this question because I really loved this question. Um, so I'm so happy you guys asked this. Um, and so, okay, so my answer would be um, at my elementary school. I went to Belt Hills, and so once a year they do like a Harry Potter night. Eva and I have both like volunteered at that as like face painters. Um, and so it's a really fun event, and you know they have like people dress up and stuff. And if they, we had an unlimited budget, I would love for Shaker High School to do like an immersive Harry Potter night. I think that we can make it so good. We could have it be an all day event. We could totally decorate the school and transform it. You know, I would love to like have the art kids paint all the windows to like, I don't know, have the portraits and stuff. We could have the broadcasting club kids, um, you know, do like the voiceovers and, you know, stuff like that. We could have theater kids dress up as different characters and, um, you know, be in character the entire time. Um, I think we could, it wouldn't even have to be Harry Potter, just any immersive like experience like that, I think would be so much fun. And, oh gosh, I would love to do that. I think if we were to do that, we'd have to invest in like mile long tables. Like, yes. <laughs> in the chandeliers, that'd be so awesome. <laughs> Yeah, I, I would, um, I know that um, I'm, because I was Sam, Sophie's brother, uh, at his college, they did um, a thing where it's a, it's a, it's a student run musical, essentially, and different students, like, they'll, they'll, like, they'll write the music and they'll direct the show, and I would love to do something like that at Shaker, because we all know that the theater department is underfunded, so with an unlimited budget, I just, I really would love to see what the theater department would be able to do, because there's so many creative individuals in the theater department, and I've would love to see, given any resource, what they could do. And I think that'd be really awesome. So having a play where we all, the students get to direct and write the music would be the ideal for me. I, I like 
oh, I guess, like, differed so greatly that kind of showed that even though you guys are kind of similar, you can be really different because that's what people are unique. <laughs> well, what, what, what kind of clubs are you guys involved in? I'm kind of curious. <laughs> Well, like as much as you can be without online stuff, but like, what are you involved in? This year, I'm mostly doing, well, the Bison. Mm -hmm. It's like, we, we've done a lot this year. Like, podcast is new, we're doing all the stuff on the website. So that's taken up a lot of time. And as a great leader, just plugging that. Mm -hmm. And then uh, for me, it's just a couple of the clubs like TEDx. I'm planning to do robotics, but I don't really know what that's supposed to be like this year so it's did you watch kickoff yeah i did but i wasn't sure what they're kicking off it was like it's like yeah they're the events so but i'm really confused year. how we're going to be doing it i know <laughs> I'm like, what? they didn't answer any of the questions that we need to have answered but it's yeah. okay I guess we'll Robot see. robotics will be really it's it's really fun once you get to actually do it actually yeah. fun. <laughs> i wish we can just go back and build an actual robot for once I know. get cut off and the last year was disappointing not being able to compete yeah yeah but once you get there though i it'll be really a really amazing experience so i'm really hoping that you'll be able to get there um would you remember what sub team you're on um i think i was assembly last year i don't know what i'm doing this year <laughs> Very nice. um lakita what called you i'm doing the same thing kind of but I did do a few clubs that I thought I would be interested, but then I slowly just dropped out of them because they weren't speaking to me. Um, there are a few clubs though that I was like really passionate about and we were gonna do so many things, but then the school went into remote and we could no longer um, like enter the building and get the supplies we needed. So that was kind of a setback. Yeah. yeah. What kind of things are you hoping to do? Like once, um, cause I guess you haven't had the real high school experience yet. <laughs> But what kind of things are you hoping to do once we go back to normal? I mean, I don't know, just kind of, I guess, look at things. Because I'm, I'm a quiet person, but, and a lot of quiet people say they observe a lot, but I'm kind of different. <laughs> like, I don't really observe that much. I'm like, if I'm doing something, I focus on that, like, entirely. But I guess I would kind of like to, like, just take a look at everything because I mean you never know if something like this is going to happen again I mean like I mm. never would have expected that um on that specific day I would not come back to school for like almost a year March 13th man I know <laughs> March 13th <laughs> that's detail and I think the thing is that surprised me that I realized later on was that was a Friday March 13th no I was kind of spooked out about that. Yeah. Well, Me, I'm not really looking towards anything specifically, but like, it's more just, I, I go to school mostly for my friends. I, for some reason, I think of like the academic part as a separate thing. <laughs> so I really want to just see my friends and talk to them in person. Once. It's been it's so been, long. What about you guys? I, like, you guys don't even see anybody for your entire senior year. Like, I know the seniors last year, they just finished off everything without even being able to see half their friends. That must suck. Yeah, I'm hoping that um things are, like, a little bit better, like, maybe the, the last it. month. I'm really hoping, because I, I just want to have, like, one day, you know, that'd yeah. be great, so. Just a couple weeks. I know. I know. I mean, it, it's not like a competition of like who has it worse. Obviously, like I know it's mm -hmm. it's it's gonna be really hard for you guys as well. Um, so, like like starting like ninth grade with I this, can't imagine. That must yeah, because like trying, but I think I think ten, so. I'm wondering how like the when like the ninth grade to tenth grade transition is gonna be, because it's gonna be like a little bit later and like moving into the actual high school environment. So, I'm curious. I hope that goes well for you. <laughs> yeah. wait, wait, can I can I hold on? I just need this. This what is one more thing? Don't I'm, I'm putting in the chat. This is um. Don't go to this website. No, 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 hold on. Cop. Those two. Stay away from them. Especially the latter. College Confidential is full of uh, toxic parents who think their kids are better than everyone, and they're going to make you feel horrible about yourself. So just don't go on it. It it will mess you up. Just there's no advice I want to. I didn't want to go. I didn't want to leave without saying that. <laughs>
Thank you. Thank you so much for joining us. We're honored to have you guys on our podcast. I feel like this was super insightful and I feel like everyone would get a lot of from this. But yeah. thank you so much for coming. Thank you so much for having us. It was a lot of fun. <laughs>